pattern. Look, Israel, Israel trains our police to control us in the NWA. Your NWO. The police are being trained by the Israeli army to defeat and control their enemy. And when your police come back, you become their enemy. They was nice before they went to Israel to get the training. But the Mossad trained them the way that they trained their soldiers to suppress the Palestinians and the Syrians. And it's with an iron fist. Okay? These are your Nazis. That's when they started coming back. It is immediately after that they started turning up on us. Brutally. Look at this. Just following orders. It's been going on since the days of the Egyptians. Can you see that? It's been going on since the days of the Egyptians. The body, pop, the body of the police force are Irish. These are Roman Catholics. These are Roman Catholics. These are people who are adherents to what I just told you, in the, what I showed you in the beginning about the Moors and the, and the, and the power and the, and the war with the church. It's been going on since the days of the Egyptians, right? Meaning that these people are crusaders. They're race soldiers. Not only are they race soldiers, they are fighting for a religious cause. They got nigger gripes, but they're anti-Kemetic too. Okay? They're anti-Kemetic. They say that you anti-Semitic, well they're anti-Kemetic. If they're Roman Catholics, they hate the fucking Egyptians. Or they hate the Commissions. And through blood testing and DNA testing and all kind of other face recognition and things of that nature, they know who you are before you know who you are. And that's a fact. This was a fake murder that took place to create public sentiment against the uh, uh, and against black nationalists and to be in favor of the police. This was one of their first rituals of false flag police killings. They know, they, there's no blood on the car. They said they blew their brains out. There's no brains anywhere. There's no blood on the door. There ain't no brains on the sidewalk. I've seen people get their brains blown out before. It don't look nothing like that. That was the cleanest thing ever. Okay? He ain't dead. He's somewhere with a check. Because why not? If it's all in the name of policing, right? It doesn't matter. There's no rules to war. Yo, fake your death for the, for the cause. Worse shit. I'll take the check. They got a bonus for them. You good. Your family good. Just stay out of the light, my nigga. We'll put you in an underworld city. I one of them underground cities, or we'll send you to one of our territories somewhere. All right, for the cause, fam. It's all good. Why not? This is, the, this is your mayor in New York, who the police committed a coup against. Look at his family, right? Same way that they rose up on Dinkin in 92. Remember, Giuliani brought up to the city hall, and they had a coup. In 92, they don't talk about that. They went and they, they rose up against the pump, they rose up against Dinkins and basically had a coup d'etat in New York City. Giuliani was leading the charge. This is when they began to take this thing and turn it into a militarized place. This is the takeover of the city, okay? This is when the goons were taking over, right? So the rally puts police under new scrutiny. Deacon denounces police protests as furthering an image of racism. All right, officers rallying Deacons is their target. So they was doing all of this to him, but they been doing it. And look who they was rocking with. That's his numbers. Confidential informant, seven. That's the black, they have appointed him as a black leader. I don't care what y'all say about it. That ain't my leader. All right, Uncle Al. Well, goddamn it, they got him on paper as your leader until you do something about it. You feel me? He's on paper as our leader. Okay. Around the time, sometime last year, Beyonce pops up with information. Internet went wild. It was crazy. Oh, shit bringing the revolution back. 
Beyonce happens to be one of the top 100 list of black influencer. She top the list of black influencer, meaning that if she influences the sisters, right, by speaking militant or even in, in, even implanting a thought of militancy in their minds, that's more powerful than the battery that she was pushing for all those years. Okay? That's more power than that. That's more powerful than the bottom feeder, you know, than the, than the lower nature mentality that she was promoting with her, her campaign and her movement. So she goes and she gets on a police car on her video. Remember, this is not about Katrina. This is about the flood that took place a little while this summer in Baton Rouge. Because people's gripe wasn't really with the whole police department dealing with uh, uh, Katrina. It was but not really like that. It was more so with the government. This shit started happening when they killed Alton Sterling. Right. That's when the sentiments towards the police and everything began to rise up, and then they had a flood, and shit like this was taking place. Okay? Then she does the video, and she's showing you the mall, and she's showing you other aspects of that black girl magic. Right. Then she does the exformation, black power, in the Super Bowl, where remember, it's about energy and emotion. It's about the battle of the hearts and minds of the people, so man, rituals evoke power. Rituals evoke all kind of dormant energies and memories and how, all that other shit. Especially when it's coming from the beehive. You know what I mean? A curvaceous, beautiful sensation. Remember, she is magnetic. She make niggas kiss the TV and everything. Wanna kill Jay Z for a minute? Well, <laughs> Ergo energy. My daughter born on her birthday. She's powerful. So she started cooking. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. She started cooking. This is a this is a Creole sister from the mud, from the boot, messianic. Okay, our Creole people are messianic. They got the power. All right? They got that power. Then she went and did a rain dance. So I don't care what nobody got to say. I don't care what nobody got to say. Baton Rouge got that rain this summer. Unprecedented rainfall. Okay? Biblical, they called it. All right? Then that happened after she didn't do this before him. This came. Remember, Baton Rouge is the. Capital of Louisiana. It's the home of the Creole. It's the home of the Juju. It's Louisiana Purchase. It's Washita. It's the uh, 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 the Mound Builders. Okay, it's Poverty Point. All right. It's all that. It's the mud. It's the bottom. It's the boot. It's the root. It's the root. Okay. And shit starts from the bottom up. The Rex. So there's the gentle giant. They killed the succession of gentle giants. Eric Garner was a gentle giant. Alton Sterling was a gentle giant. Terrence Clutch was a gentle giant. These are gamers. These are hunters. This is Hunger Games. They kill black bears like they kill gentle giants. They kill brown coyotes, brown birds, black lions, brown lions, black dogs, brown dogs. Brown beavers, brown deer, yellow bone deers, light skinned deer, almond complexion deer, pecan, pecan deer. Okay? All of the colors, that's what they kill. When they kill a game, you go in a crack of crib, he got a lion's head on the fucking wall, a goddamn buffalo, and a bear. That's your black ass. Those are your totems. Those are your animals. Lions don't be in Europe like that. They don't fuck with the Europeans. Okay? That's your people. You are intricately tied to your animals. Like in Kibbit. So if you came in a white person's house and they had a hawk head on a, on a thing, an implant head on a wall, huh? A baboon's head on the wall, you'd be like, God damn it, this nigga's comedic. So when you go and when you when you see these Europeans, they brag, they got black bears as rugs, they walk on them. They got bison on the wall. Okay? Some niggas even got horses and shit. That's all melanated. That's all yours, people. That's all us. Okay? They're gamers. They go and kill. 
Why are they killing giraffe? Why are they killing rhino? Why are they killing leopard? Why are they killing bear? Why are they killing tiger? That's them killing you. They're training on killing you. Why did the European come and kill all the bison? Because he knew that the people was attached to them. It wasn't just for food. Right. Shit. So that's who they're killing gentle giants. They're hunting them. Remember, when they put this one out, they said that it caused PTSD when the, when the, when the killings get loose. But also what they cause is group consciousness. And when you get over that PTSD, you might collectively say, fuck that, I want blood. I'm tired of waiting for a guilty verdict. Enough is enough. Give me blood. And if enough of us say that on some Baton Rouge type of shit, or some black power militancy type of shit, or some let's put them in a pot and cook their asses, Right? When enough of us have it, when enough is enough, and we start saying things like that, then things like this started happening. Because they put this shit on TV, then later on that night, this happened. Five police got killed. In Dallas. And they said the suspect was a black power nationalist. Okay. I should have uploaded the slide. I wanted to try to hit a shootout. I had nothing, it was not one shooter. And that nigga was shooting space weapons. Huh? It sounded like, nah, I'm dead ass. It sounded like a, a it, it sounded beyond a cannon. It sounded like a, 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 a warship was going off. That wasn't that man right there. And they said that he scrolled RB in blood and did die. That's what they said, he scrolled, scrolled RB on the wall. What the, all right, this is the bomb, this is the robot that they sent to kill him. Okay? The beginning of the drones. That is a drone on wheels. That's still called a drone. So they're introducing the drone killings. They're gonna introduce drone attacks on domestic terrorists on a domestic level. Dallas shooter, Mika Johnson. Huh, Mika Johnson. Mika is short for Michael, right? right? Johnson, who we got in the community by the name of Johnson? Which one of our teachers' first name is Michael? Okay, both of us. We're told that the single deadliest attack on law enforcement since 9-11 in exactly 777 weeks after 9-11 is the upcoming August 7th target window. Barack Hussein Obama, the ambush happened at the intersection of Maine and Murphy. Okay, remember it happened on 7-7-7, because 2016, you had the one in the 6th and that 7, it happened July 7th, 7th. Mm. Okay? Mika Johnson, a Dallas shooter who killed five police officers, wrote in blood the letters RB and other markings on the wall of the parking garage. Police investigators are putting a lot of effort to decipher the writings. They are doing so by going through evidence from the shooter suburban Dallas home. The shooter was a black army veteran who urged authorities to get a black negotiator as he would only speak to him. The shooter wrote in blood on the wall of a parking garage where police cornered and later killed him. Police Chief David Brown said, and there goes your Brown again. Remember, Michael Brown was the name of the FEMA supervisor in Katrina. That was Mike Brown. Mike Brown was the one who raised pale horses. And he was the FEMA supervisor in Katrina. Go and look it up. White boy, Michael Brown. Mike Brown, they call him. Okay? Then later on down the line, you got this Mike Brown. You got it, we got our Mike Brown. Right? According to Fox News, two hours of negotiations took place. They never released the tapes. They never released anything on him after they killed him. Okay? Nothing. No follow-up. Like I said, they implant the story and keep it moving. It's a psyops. While the shooter taunted the authorities by laughing at them, he started singing, and there was a moment when he asked how many officers he had shot. But then they see something took place on June 13, 2015. A white boy went to the Dallas Police Department and shot it up with an automatic weapon. Okay? And they don't even talk about that. So this is the cosmos. This is the one who is responsible for the Baton Rouge killings. 
Okay? <clears throat> this is the one who is responsible for the next series of murders that took place with the authorities. It's still speculation. As you can see in the article, he called RB, he had a picture with Griff, he was wearing a dashiki, and I don't know. Let's start looking a little bit into these conscious people. But when he came, he brought everything with him. Okay? He represented everything at once. Let's do the knowledge on him. Sing his name. It's possible. He had a book. A holistic guide for the total transformation of melanated people. Okay? This is the pictures of him when he was going shooting. He's masked up, submachine weapons, army shit. Okay? He joined an anti-black government group. He renounced the slave name. Sounds like the Moors. He had a manifesto. Okay? He dealt with Dr. Boyce Watkins. He was signed up to Boyce Watkins. He was signed up to Tariq Nashi. He had a video of Mia Sanetta on his YouTube channel, man. Mm. He uploaded the video about natural hair. It was part of his YouTube channels. So with him, he cast a net over everybody. There was no speculation with him. There was no speculation. He brought in everybody. He was setting raw. He was a sovereign. He was signed up with boys. He was chilling with hidden colors. <laughs> so that's what started the pro. Okay? That's what started the pro. The campuses are a place where differing opinions are welcome. Black women are leaning in and getting nowhere. This is the spin that they got on y'all. Black women want a seat at the table, and yet they are close to invisible at the highest ranks of corporate America, reveals data released Tuesday morning by consulting firm McKinsey and Company and LeanIn.org, the nonprofit women's leadership organization founded by Facebook chief operating officer Cheryl Sandberg. This is the second year to, why, why no sisters is doing it? Why no sisters are doing it? All right? So they're basically saying to the sisters, you know, y'all already run corporate America. You're the bloodline and the life force of making us these millions, but y'all gotta try hard, goddammit, to even sit at the table. Okay? That's the dangling carrot. We gotta sit at the table for you, ladies. And then the ladies is like, yeah, fuck these niggas. <laughs> because they're playing that gender role, they're playing that feminism thing, they're playing the daughters of the American Revolution, is playing breaking the families up, and creating all kinds of schisms inside of the black home. The nuclear family has been nuclear attacked. There's a nuclear fallout. Now the new family, according to the Romans, you can have two women and that's the family. And, and adopt as many children as you want. Two men. Like uh, Dr. Africa said, that's masturbation. That's not love. That's not even sex. Intercourse is the phallus entering the course of the vagina. That is intercourse. I don't know. Everything else is masturbation. Black woman will decide the next president. What's she going to give you, though? If that's the case, what has she promised you? And if she promised you something, would you even take it? Or should you even take it? This is a teen that got pepper spray. Okay, this is an article. Why I'm racist. I am a white American male. I am married to a beautiful blonde haired green eyed woman. I have two amazing blonde haired blue eyed boys. I was a blonde haired blue eyed child who grew up in a suburban New Jersey in a solid family with a mother, a father, a brother, and two dogs. Damn it, my girlfriends. I lived a life marked by opportunity and forgiveness, and while I may not have always had much, I always had the benefit of the doubt. I was raised to treat everyone equally, regardless of race or any other demographic for that matter, and while my time may have been predominantly white, I certainly didn't grow isolated from other races and cultures, but even with the upbringing and the exposure I was blessed with, I'm probably still a racist. I don't mean racist like hate-filled bigot who dehumanizes and devalues the lives of others based on skin color. I mean that I'm uncomfortable with, ignorant of, and distant from racial inequalities that exist in my country. All right. Let me go through here. 
some police killings, caught on camera, some of the history of the police, the slave catchers, the North Carolina cops. This fear of black men is real. At the same time, police are thinking, just say a lie. So the fear that they are justifying to say, yo, we scared. To be honest with you, I think the African American males are treated differently by law enforcement, and that's my honest opinion. I think this fear of black men is real. As a black officer, sometimes you feel like people expect or want you to pick a side, when in fact, you can be both, pro-black and pro-police. Where? Really? I encourage my fellow officers to get out of their cars and meet people, interact with people who are different than you. It's not a good thing for me to interact with people only when I'm talking to them, taking them to jail. It's good to get out and know these people before something goes wrong, so now you have built up some kind of relationship of trust. I think the inherent fear comes from our history. For whatever reason, we as black men have looked at the ones who are going to harm your daughters, the ones who are most likely to rob and steal and kill. Historically, dating back all the way to slavery, the picture that has been painted of black males, you're not educated enough, you're just a breaker, a mule, continues to permeate our psyche and culture. I think that has a lot to do with the perception black men face on a daily basis. It goes back to the relationship black males and white males have historically had. This is the police officer's post. You are not victims anymore. You are the bad guys now. You have your hands out for more freebies. You won't take responsibility for yourself. You have a 74 illegitimacy rate. You are 13% of the population, but you commit 65% of the crime. You produce nothing. You contribute nothing. You take it, just want more. You don't think the law should apply to you. You blame others for your own decisions. You don't try in school. You don't try your work. You have no concept of personal responsibilities. You don't see the direct connection between your own decisions and the impact on your quality of life. You can't imagine how hard it is to make it in the world because you never try. You think you can't have the quality of life without earning it. You don't raise your children without any morality. You celebrate violence and misogyny. You defend the inexcusable. You beat your domestic partners. At this point, you are not the victims of the bad guys. You are the bad guys. That's a North Carolina white boy police on Facebook that's what he put up. That's what they're saying, that nigga, we was the, the, the savages, yeah, in history. Yeah, you can prove that. But guess what? We're gonna prove that you the savage of today, nigga, because you try to be more savage than us. You niggas trying to become more Roman than the Romans. So while the Romans are doing a good job of cleaning up their image around the world, trying to, through Hollywood, which is their magical device, through the media and other things, what are we doing? Destroying ours. Designer genetics. Lil Wayne was a minister at a gay couple's wedding while he was locked up in prison. In three weeks, he's releasing a memoir called Born to November. Obviously, he wasn't a licensed minister, so the marriage doesn't necessarily hold any weight outside of prison, but it's one hell of a story. For the ceremony, Wayne and various inmates decorated the halls with toilet paper and held toast with the finest flavors of Gatorade. Gatorade is liquid gold in this bitch, he writes. Imagine seeing grown ass men in jail hanging tissue for wedding decoration and one of them is Little Wayne crazy. I can't go on. <laughs> Fat Joe, haven't thought about it. I am with protests in the national anthem. Soldiers die for fighting for our freedom, not cops. Why disrespect them? Little Wayne on Colin Kaepernick. I thought racism was over. <laughs> Little Wayne ordered to produce documents to detox. Okay, 777. That was the day that that bomb, I mean, that's the day that them officers killed. All right, but they also had a 7-7 in London, the Islam in the uh, Islam in the Iraq war. There was a bomb in there. This was the truck. That was the white boy, the blue, the killed, the um, shot at the cops. All right, that's the first Texas shooting. Uh, uh, that's the beginning of these um, mass shootings. It was the Texas Tower shooting in 1966 when a Marine, another Marine. Another army, armed force personnel, Manchurian, went on a killing spree out there in Texas. Okay? Dallas ranks as the number three in the nation for the rate of fatal police shootings. So is that divine karma? Is that the get back? All right? Stunning video shows first fried plaque launched into outer space. <laughs> what? Stunning video shows First pride flag launched into outer space. So there's a flag for people with a sexual preference. Is there a polygamy flag? 
Can I wave that? Yeah. Huh? I'm just saying, people got a flag based on their sexual deviancies and their position in sex. Huh? Is there a doggy style flag somewhere out there? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> There's a homosexual flag, meaning that you come under a banner of a flag based on your sexual practices. Facts? And they flew that shit to space. Hillary says super predator. He said the Central Park Five, the wolf packs, we should kill them. It's still the same conversations. All right? Harvard Medical Scientists said police killers should be recorded as public ep an epidemic. They're not treating it as such. They didn't even talk about it in the debates like that. All right? So, with that right there, family, I'm going to say this. That they are doing a very good job at captivating the minds of our people, putting us in a perpetual state of fear. What is the solution? The solution is stop being distracted. The solution is to start doing. The solution is to be more active. The solution is to begin to build with those who are ready to build. Imagine all of us coming to class and we ready for our, our teacher, to, like we ready for me to do the lecture and I go outside with my microphone and try to talk to the white people that's walking by. That's how we look when we become conscious and we try to wake people up and they ain't concerned with this shit. They don't got nothing to do with that. Why are you bothering them? What's your problem? Why don't you focus on the people that's trying to wake up and do something with their lives? Niggas are suffering. They need camaraderie. They need sisterhood. They need brotherhood. Okay? People need to begin to really work together. All right? So, Black Messianic Forces. I got a book in my bag of Yahweh Ben Yahweh in Miami. How many people have ever heard of him? You gotta do the research on what he did in the 80s. I'm talking about, they talk about Black Wall Street and all of this. He owned numerous hotels, numerous stores. This was an Hebrew Israelite practicing the Black Messianic Jewish, Hebrew, Israelite faith from Yahweh channeling that, okay? Then you had Dr. York with the Nuwabians, Messianic, that was a Messianic movement. Answer Allah, the Nuwabians, a lot of people got things that they want to talk about, about what happened on the land and all of that, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people, the Nuwabians themselves were Messianic. So now we find ourselves in this community. As we can see, there are covert operations taking place. We showed you earlier what the Cointel Pro 2.0 is. So we don't got no time to play no games. We don't got no time to be fractured. We don't got no time to be looking for the differences in each other when we should be focused on the similarities in each other. That's what true leadership does. That's what leaders do. Leaders bring people together. Agents take them apart. Okay? So we got to begin to focus on that and we have to get behind the people on the front line. As you can see, there is a war against the Black and more Messiahs, all right? We will continue this narrative on Halloween when the Brother Blue Pill presents his, um, at his, his, his addition or his add-on to the conversation, and then hopefully after that, we can have KT the Arch Degree come in and decode a number of movies that are speaking to this topic specifically, but there's a fear. So you don't taunt people who fear you, okay? You don't become arrogant towards those once you realize that there's a fear taking place of genetic inferiority. You don't even say white supremacy anymore. You call it what it is, white inferiority, okay? That's what it is. They're acting inferior because if you were superior, you wouldn't have to terrorize your people. So, there's more to be talked about. We'll continue the narrative through the networks, through the platforms. Look out for Know the Ledge. Um, KTL app is coming. I wish I could have showed it to you on the thing. We have a membership site that is coming. We have a lot of things in the works, but I had to take my time. This came to me as a, as a like, the spirits just grabbed me and was like, you gotta do it on this day. Stop everything that you're doing. So I gotta get back on my job and take care of a lot of stuff that I had to pause, but this had to come out for the people. I wanna thank everybody that was with us all the way up until now. Salute to all of the viewers, salute to everybody on the live stream. Please give yourselves a round of applause in the audience. Thank you, I love you. 
You know what I mean? Salute. If there's any questions, I'll take about three of them before we wrap it up. I hope nobody leaves here feeling inferior. I hope nobody leaves here being scared as if somebody is going to come and get you. Hopefully, this helped to pull the covers off and to lift up the veils and to show you, listen, don't be in fear. There's nothing to fear. Be who you are. Be who you were sitting here to be. Be the messianic ones. Prepare your community, your family, and your environment to receive this energy that our ancestors are sending us at this time. Apologize to no one for your greatness. Okay? What you should be doing is taking some of the information about your glorious past or the past that was glorious. You don't got to relate to the Moors. You don't got to say that that was you. This is not, you know what I mean? I want to be down. You feel me? That, that probably wasn't all of, us, all of us. Some of us was in Central Africa, South Africa, whatever. But it's a story. It's a narrative. It's a missing piece. Okay, and it makes a lot of goddamn sense when you hear it as to why certain people are in certain positions and why they're doing certain things to certain other people, does it not? Okay, all right. Yes, any, you gonna do it for the live stream if there's any questions in the live? All right. Anybody in the audience has any questions about tonight's presentation? That's it? I guess that was a good job. Yes. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Oh, you got I'm about to say. Uh, Come on. <laughs> how do you go about identifying who's the black of more Messiah? I read the I read the definition of messianic ones. Okay. They are rappers that are messianic. It's niggas in the hood that are messianic. You understand what I'm saying? And they getting killed in the hood, but they messianic. The brother who raised me up, he was Haitian. Tony Lindor. He got killed in 93. He was messianic in his way. Some of us got OGs, big homies, messianic. Got messianic forces, messiah-like. People listen to them. They watch them. They're magical Negroes. They be doing shit that defies reality. Okay. Messianic ones, like what T.I. is doing. Messianic. Okay, David Banner, messianic. What Umar is doing. Stephen Marley. Stephen Marley. You know what I mean? Usain Bolt. Showing messianic things. Latent superpowers. Latent abilities. So, the ones that are out here doing this work. The ones that are out here putting their life on the lines. The ones that are out here channeling and being able to tap into their ancestral self. Those are your messianic ones. It's not a person. It's not an organization. It's not one or two people. Stop looking for favorites. Stop putting us against each other. We're not fucking dogs. We're not pit bulls. This is not cockfighting. All right? Oh, this is my favorite. Like, no, this shit ain't wrestling. You, you, you'll get one of these. You'll catch up. You'll get one of these niggas bodied out here. Stop doing that. Y'all are dealing with powerful people putting powerful people against each other. And when they weaponize the information, they can kill each other with that shit. You know how many of these lectures are walking dead right now? Because they got bodied by somebody else? They got killed, you remember the Matrix? If they kill you in the Matrix, your body dies? Right. I, 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 I promise you, I know them. They well-dressed cadavers, but they got body. Okay? We are stronger together, Voltron. Mm. If I hit you with my pinky, Versus my fist, there's a different bag, it's a different feeling. So, we have to come together. We have to unite the messianic ones. We gotta bring the forces together. Because like I showed you before, when we were together, even in a cosmopolitan environment, which is social media, which is corporate, which is the industry, if you're an artist, you're in front of cosmopolitan crowds when you're displaying your skills and your craft, right? right? You don't get all fucking uh, religious then, you know what I'm saying? You don't start set tripping then, or oh, no, I ain't gonna perform unless there's more in the audience. Uh. And I mean, what's your nationality? You know, uh. there's no rapper anywhere saying that. You put him on a stage in Oregon, it could be all pilgrims. He gonna rock to the pilgrims. Because they rock with the messianic ones. That's what they were doing. I showed you, we gave them everything. So why would they be attracted to those who gave them everything? Oh. Why would they not be drawn to their parents? Why would they not be drawn to their big homies? Why would not they, they drawn to the rappers? 
Little Uzi Vert in them. They love these niggas. They love Future. You know what I mean? They love Rick Ross. They love N.W.A. They even love Chuck D sometimes. Because I would say that they love us when we're in our lower self. That's when they can rock with us. I was in a club recently, and they was playing some high, some high level hip hop. And the white dude was dancing off, you know, <laughs> unrhythmically. Then the trap came on, and they took over the dance floor. Huh? They was cooking. The white boy! They was all in the, they knew how to do all of that shit. Because the level of the, the frequency is lower. That's when they step in. They can play on that realm. They can't play on the realm of the rock hymns and all of them. But they can play on that entry level right there. So why is it that That's crazy. When you go to certain people like Rock in concert or oh, even your Bob Marley's or you know higher conscious. They're there. They're there. They are there though. They are. They're, they're more than they respect, appreciate, worship, and are attracted to black men, black women when they are showing or they're demonstrating messianic forces and energies, meaning that they're drawn to the Moors, meaning that they're drawn to the Kemites, meaning that they're drawn to the people who exhibit certain kind of powers. So they don't have no gripes like that. They don't care if you call them devil on the stage. They don't care about that. They're there to support. They're there to pick up off of that energy that you're feeding them. You're feeding them. You can charge them a hundred dollars. They don't care. They could they could charge up on that. They can feed off of that. So they might not be able to necessarily mimic you when they want to mimic that. You know what I mean? They try their best with them and them. But at the level where you're cooking and you're, you're selling coke and you're killing niggas and you're pimping and you're doing all of this savage gothic like, right? I, I was showing you they were savage gothic occult like. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, that's my language. I fucks with that the long way. I can get with that because the modern day hip hop are trying to emulate the punk rockers. The punk rockers, that's when Lil Wayne, that's when Lil Wayne came in. He wasn't trying to emulate Tupac, he was trying to emulate the punk rockers. He was trying to emulate those people who are anti-establishment, anti-social, people who are very suicidal. Right? The Kirk Cobain's of the world because when you popping pills and sipping lean and slipping coke and doing all of these things, you are suicidal. He's running from something. What is he running from? It came to find out that he got abused in earlier life. He's being financially abused by baby. That nigga kissed him on the lips on TV. Signs of a molestation. Okay? He said on many occasions that he didn't want to live because they took rabbit from him. Right? So, the youth that came after him on his way followed that same archetype. These niggas are punk rockers now. Wiz Khalifa, Uzi Vert, all of them are proclaiming to be punk rockers. They're not rappers anymore. They transcended. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to be, they're trying to be, they're trying to be, you know, but one would say that we introduced that. So they're only going back to what we, we were, you know, uh, what's the name, Fish, Fishbone and them, and um, some of the original punk rockers and things of that nature. But them niggas are not Afro punkin. Okay? Mm. You punk rockin', but you talking down on your woman. You punk rockin', but you promoting a deaf culture. You punk rockin', but you promoting niggas to punk rock themselves to jail. Okay? To be a punk and get rocked. <laughs> or be a punk on a rock. So, no, we don't need that. We can utilize something more powerful. We don't need no niggas trying to be a punk rocker. Why don't you try to be a revolutionary? Why don't you try to be like pop? Huh? Why don't you try to be like an outlaw or somebody? So, it doesn't really matter with them. Remember, they're gonna feed off of us wherever we at. It's a parasite-host relationship. Parasite-host relationship. Parasite-host relationship, meaning that they had to come into your neighborhoods in this place. They had to regentrify and be amongst you. They feed off of you, okay? You got the heat, you got the energy, you emit sun rays and all of these other things. You, have the, you are the creator. Why are we all in corporate America if they don't like us? Why are we all in corporate America? And, and, and remember, not managerial roles, but menial roles as the worker bees, as the help. You niggas are the help, right? The batteries, like the matrix, okay? That's how they got us. So they feed off of us like a parasite would feed off of a host. So inside of the industry, it's your talents, it's your skills, it's your natural root strength, it's your athleticism, it's your bars, it's your creativity, it's your swag, all of these things. And what do they do? They hoard over it with the moolah, okay? With the money, something that they print, and then they take all of your stuff and they own niggas' rights for life, your catalog, and all of these things. All right? 
Very high level prostitution. Sophisticated. So, yeah. Peace. Um, I, I like the fact of, uh, like, well, pretty much, oh, yeah. Peace. Yeah, peace. And then, um, I like the fact that during the lecture, you know, one of the major pieces that you were speaking about were the facts that, uh, you know, we've always been a seafaring people. You know, we've always been like mariners, you know, or pirates, whatever you call us. You know, we've always pretty much ran the seas. So anytime you look and you see like all of the major artifacts with indigenous people all over the world, you know, one of the centerpieces is always a big boat, right? And so one question that I have uh, that I don't usually see brought up in, um, you know, like I guess like usually with like the tapes, but um, you know, since we're like the oldest people, you know, and we're like the indigenous people, we're the original people, you know, why is it that like, for some reason, like with these different schisms, uh, you know, we love pyramids, right? But we don't identify with the oldest pyramids. The mounds? Which, yeah, which are all over here, you know? That's an interesting question. There's gonna have to be more lectures like this done. We're gonna, we need documentaries. This is bottom level shit right here, okay? I love doing this, but I get frustrated because I don't like being at this level right now. Because I know it's in front of us. They going into virtual, goddammit. You're gonna have, you're gonna be able to put on an Oculus Rift or a virtual eye set, and you'll be in goddamn Spain during the fights if you want to. Mm. You'll be in the castle, chilling, you and your wife. You could be in the chambers of Kimmich and all of these things. This thing has taken, is, 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 technology has taken leaps and bounds. So we have to adapt. We are living in the future. We have to begin to live like that. We have to begin to act like that. We have to begin to move like that. Victims ain't, are not going to make it into the future. The future is a victimless society. So while they got us acting like we in the 60s and all kind of, they, they revolving, revolution means to revolve. These niggas is talking about populating Mars with Elon Musk. And they're doing all kind of apps and all kind of technology and stuff. We gotta catch up to that because they're like, yo, why y'all complaining? We build the worlds. Build your world up. Okay? And we'll go world for world. Mm. World for world. So we need to be making video games. Alright? We got classes coming up where we're going to teach the family how to make video games. Unreal Engine. There's a whole bunch of other technology out there where you can make video games. You don't got to be in Japan to make a goddamn video game. You can make apps. Where's our comedic acts? Where's our Medunetta acts? Where's the goddamn uh, Circle 7 or the Black Laws Dictionary app? Where's all of these things? It's all of these voids where you can make your billions if it's about the bread, if it's really about the money. It should be about the legacy, but you can pass some things down to, to your little hair rules if you create technology inside of the technology age. Niggas are still trying to save up for barbershops. In the technology age, smartphones smarter than them. Only piece of technology they got is a hoverboard. I think it's the distractions that is holding people in bondage. But I sh the distractions are Lil Wayne. The distractions are Fat Joe. The distractions is World Star. The distractions is the gossip sites. The distractions is the knuckle draggers that are around you. The distractions is all of that shit on love and hip hop. The distractions is all of that. The distractions is about the rumors that every morning we wake up, it's a new rumor in Negro land. And consumer, yo, meat mill and game and beef and beanie and all of this. <laughs> that don't got nothing to do with you. That's the distractions. A new side op, a new police killed a nigga, a new police murder, a new this, a new that, a Hillary Clinton debate. All of these distractions because they have captured the hearts and the minds of our people in the PSYOP operation. They collect big data off of social media, metadata. So now they know how to push buttons. Now they know how to stroke the emotions. Now they know how to turn on the pain body. And once the pain body is turned on through the collective, they know how to add on other things to the pain body. And they know how to feed off of the pain body to make themselves stronger and make their little things take place and make their shit pop up. That's the kind of sorcery that you're dealing with. That's the kind of wickedness that you're dealing with. So what I'm saying is we got to begin to pay attention to us. Anything that you put your mind on and anything that you put your eyes on, you give power to, you give 
strip to. So even when we notice in these white people, fuck the Black Lives Matter stupid shit. Okay, stop getting get away from white people as far away as possible. My freedom, or the 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 the, the smidgen of it that I have, has a lot to do with the fact that I'm not surrounded by them. Exactly. Yeah. I don't even feel that. I don't feel that suckling anymore. You feel me? I don't feel the drainage anymore like that. I gotta deal with the groveling Negroes though, the black devils, they something else. Okay? <laughs> they a handful. But they, 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 you know, you could deal with your kind a lot more easier than with aliens. And demons and shit. But I don't, you know, even when they come, they, they just feel my energy. They know I don't fuck with them like that. You know, I got cracker repellents. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cracker repellent. This is a cracker repellent. This is a cracker repellent. Because they know that it's not Egypt, they know it's Kemet. It's a difference. Exactly. I'm not on some Greek pathology shit. They know that I ain't from a fraternity. Yeah, they know I'm ready to tie them up. But anyway, <laughs> nah, it's not that serious. Because keep in mind, mm -hmm. that's my, like, and then we, when we do talk, I'm, I'm, I'm building with them, I'm teaching them shit. And I'm asking them real questions. Yeah. You know, ain't no animosity. Look, this is the story, right? Just tell my peoples that. And they cool. Yeah, because they don't even know. They don't, if they do know, they was waiting for a nigga to bring it up. Because what they do is this. They took an oath to not tell you. Yeah. But they took an oath to answer you if you ask the right question. Remember, it's the power of the question. Yeah. That's when you receive the best answers. That's why Rich is such a powerful, that's why his channel is so powerful, because he asked the right questions. Nobody was never asking me and my brother the right goddamn questions. They didn't even want to ask us anything. We were asking everybody else the questions, but he finally came along and had the sense to ask us the right questions. So you got to ask the right questions to these crackers, and they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. But I gave you some bars. I gave you some food. I gave you some gems. You don't gotta go arrogant with them. Hey, Bob, let me talk to you at the water cooler. Hey, tell me about the, uh, you. I heard some things on PBS. You don't gotta say it came from Red Pill. Say it came from PBS. You know what I mean? It's cloak and dagger that shit. Slide it with it. Yo, I seen this thing on, uh, on Vice. They like Vice these days. Word, yeah. And they drop it on them. And I guarantee you that you'll build a, a powerful conversation with these people who are hiding your information. You know what I mean? They just kind of nervous that they don't, they, they, I don't think that they're ready to give it up. Because once they give it up, it's gonna wake up more people and that's the end of their pony ride. Okay? So that's why a lot of shit is taking place. Distraction, fear, fear stagnates you, fear stifles you, fear stunts your growth, deep growth. Okay? That's even what that, that Turner shit did to us. That was a fear campaign. Okay? It wasn't that liberating, you got hung at the end. And they, they turned this meat into goddamn uh, uh, grease for the wax. Depressing a little bit. All right. <laughs> so, it's late. Okay? I don't want to get sued by anybody in here for keeping them out of their jobs tomorrow. You know, but we'll continue this. I like doing a live stream. I'm open to doing more of these. You know, it's much more information. You know what I mean? But, and I, I'm going to tell y'all an interesting story. I lost my lecture today. It got erased. Yeah, at one o'clock. So, the ancestors, I was able to do what I had to do, but I lost my lecture. You know what I mean? But it, it's that test, you get tested. Yeah. Do you really want this shit? Do you really want to do this? Is this really, are you made for this? Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. That's the test. And if that's what it is, then you keep pushing, you keep going. And that's what I leave you with. I don't care what happens. Okay, what did your grandparents go through? What did our great-grandparents go through? They thought the world was coming to an end. They were scared of the Bushes and the Clintons and the Trumps of their era. They persevered. This shit ain't real like that. I come from the 90s, Brooklyn. They would have been came in here and did something to us back in the days. Okay, you couldn't walk down certain streets without getting victimized, sodomized, traumatized, and all kinds of other things. From the Knuckle Dragons. That, this shit was a killing field downtown. Okay, so you can miss me with the me walking around thinking that it's worse now. It's not worse. I don't look at the police like they're trying to do nothing to me. They be saying hi to me and shit. Okay, I'm not, I'm not walking with that. 
but I know who they are. I know that they're policy enforcers. I know that they're corporate mercenaries, and I'm cool. They stay in their place, I stay in mine. You dig know what I'm saying? We have to walk with no fear. Right. We have to know who we are. That's it. We have to love ourselves, love our culture, love our history, love this information, love our future, love where we at now. Take the L's and the W's together. You know, we'll be better. And that's it. And love and light to the family, peace. And feed them to your children What you think is Thanksgiving? Yo, if I was there I would've killed the pilgrims Broke now My forefathers fumble billions Trillions But I keep it trillin' Cause my inner wealth never diminished Far from gimmicks Niggas will spill the beans Without spilling a Guinness I won't stop till my neck froze Till my neck gold Till my whole set hold When I cash checks bank rolls No stacks, shit can't fold Can't trust you, your man told since it's the greatest to the hell hole They throw dirt on my name But it never stuck like Velcro Came back clean on them Glock 9 got the infrared beam on them I remember I was smoking with a bitch named Keisha Game time, I was in the bleachers Now it's fourth quarter and I'm water MVP, what? Chilling with my feet up, yeah